early Vajpayee was not the Nehruvian we know at all. He, he in fact seemed to be the diametrically opposite. I began to see the, the a pattern in his genuine dilemmas on one hand and double speaks. Hmm. That you know, every time there was, jisko uh, kehte kale badal matrade the over the RSS, he would protect the RSS. Why Atal Bihari Vajpayee? Because he's someone who's been written about a lot. We've had two biographies on them on him, two famous ones at least. There was not a lot of nostalgia hmm. and it was partly out of that curiosity uh, that, you know, I started digging up books and I realized that there was a lot of hack and stuff. There were caricatures on uh, him, you know, being a liberal, being a Nehruvian, that kind of stuff. But when I started going to the archives, I was shocked and amused uh, to discover so many facets of his, his personality that they were not popularly known. Later, Vajpayee became a liberal and RSS began to doubt him. That was much later. Hmm. But the early Vajpayee, he was smarter and he was far more ferocious, uh, you know, <laughs> than, than, than many of the RSS people of, who were his contemporaries in that sense. And which is why he got noticed and he got promoted. That they judge him really very harshly when he was in office, but they are not soft on him. Now they acknowledge that Vajpayee being a bridge, was uh, it was necessary for Vajpayee to act in the way he did back then. Because without Vajpayee, there would be no Modi. You've specifically shied away from, uh, you know, calling him a Mukhota. Why, why is that? Well, I mean, Manisha, I think ideologues do th that kind of thing. I'm not an ideologue. It would be, I think it would be kind of, it would be a reduction. See, in my head, it's a contradiction. A Swam Sevak being, uh, you know, a Swam Sevak also being an MP, being, you know, representing the same thing in constitution. Because, you know, sometimes Sang Parivas ethos are anti-constitution in many ways. Hmm. But he saw no contradiction. He saw being a Swam Sevak and being a citizen who could represent a party, you know, it was perfectly compatible. And that's why I'm saying that he thought that Hindutva was the only genuine model of secularism, he thought in some ways. Something like this, Koi Batlai, Kabul mein jaakar kitni tori masjidein. Ya Gopal ya Ram ke naam pe mene kab... Yes, and he was kiya. 17. Nehru's letter to G.B. Pant uh, from 49. Nehru is saying, Ki bhai, main Lucknow jata hu. I can't recognize what Hindi you guys speak. <laughs> the Prime Minister is saying, you know, I'm like a stranger in my own homeland. Hmm. Like, I can't, make sense, I, I can't make sense of the Hindi that you guys speak these days. There was an element of, a strong element of detachment in his personality. Introspection also. Yes. And being able to look at his him, his own self from afar. Yes, or yeah, I think that, 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 that yeah, dunya agar mil bhi jaye to kya hai uh, kind of attitude. Which is why if you see at the BJP's lo uh, the first session in Bombay, you see that he's all about, he wanted to present it as the real Janta Party. Hmm. Hai? JP's Janta Party, Gandhi's Janta Party, not as Savarkar's or Golwalkar's uh, Jansang. So he wanted that clear break. He certainly would have loved a, a temple in Ayodhya, but I, I think minus the violence, he wouldn't have wanted that movement to be violent, and he certainly would not have wanted BJP to to make it the, the most important point of uh, you know uh, its its ideology. The UP government passed that legislation against uh, you know killing of cows, and all parties all parties wanted to take credit for that. Mm. So there was so all of that shows that there was there were common people and and uh, that there were commonalities between. So many commonalities between the Congress conservatives and Sang Parivar, and I wouldn't be surprised. On the matter of Pakistan, Nehru was a hawk on, on so many occasions, hmm. and that needs to be presented more clearly. I mean, we all know that he wanted Kashmir for, uh, for sure, but this part, I was I was pretty surprised when I when I came across this letter, because it, it I do not know why uh, uh, people who were in power earlier did not want letters like these to be printed. Vajpayee was as a right, I call him an uh, you know an emotionally desolate. He was a man child in the 50s. A lot of trauma, pent up trauma, and, and, and all of that. And she provided him an emotional anchor. Hmm. And that is, I mean, as a biographer, I think that's a massive contribution. That, you know, he would kind of make it sound as if, you know, he was that fakir, uh, you know, who, who had given away his career and who, who had chosen not to get married. Uh, For to, the sake of the nation. Ha, to save India's soul, all of that. And, you know, he had actually a huge fan following by the 70s, and people thought of him like that. Hmm.